This is On The Wire, Racing TV's podcast for the best racing previews in association with Bar One Racing. Yeah, he's back on the show. It's Gavin Lynch returning to On The Wire with himself, Johnny Ward, Fran Berry and Will Riley from the sponsors Bar One Racing. Will will be here probably to talk a lot about Dundalk, considering it's his favourite thing in the world, but we'll also be talking about Tremor. A couple of very interesting meetings at Tremor over the weekend. And we obviously have declarations for both. And we have a fascinating card at the Curra, uh, which I expect Fran Burry will be on top to bottom of with a very interesting ledger trial ahead of Irish Champions Weekend. Let's start with uh, Gavin Lynch, though. Gavin, it's great to have you back on the show. How are you, Johnny? I am good. You're here uh, partly to uh, give your erudite offerings on um, the Irish cards, one of the top uh, punters slash tipsters in the country, but you're also here for a more special noble cause, that of uh, a charity cycle that's going to take place next month. Uh, and it is something that's very close to your heart as well. And I'd imagine uh, close to the hearts of many of us after the death of Pat Smullen. Yeah, look, I'm sure everybody was in, in shock uh, when Pat passed away. It was very, very sad for everybody. And also my mum passed away from the same pancreatic cancer 11 years ago. So I just thought with the lockdown last year, I started doing a bit of cycling. So I decided to uh, do a fundraiser. So we're doing a bit of a mad one. We're starting uh, in Laytown Racecourse and we're doing seven race courses all the way to the Curra, including uh, two stud farms as well. So it's on Saturday, the 25th of September, but it should be good. Coast to Curra, Franbury. A uh, really good initiative. Um, I'll probably be working that day and get out and cycling it, but uh, <laughs> that, that'll be a. Uh, uh, but uh, no, fair play. It's it's, um, it's garnering a lot of attention. To be fair, uh, the cycle and a uh, good few people getting involved. And uh, look, the more the merrier, and the more money that can be raised for that cause. Uh, the better and uh, look it's uh, it's going to be nice to see the lads end up in the car are you going to Giltown Stud as well Gavin no or what, what stud yeah, farms are you going we are, to we're going to so we're starting Lake Town Racecourse slash Beach we're going to Belliestown Navin Fairy House then we're going to My Glare Stud which Pat obviously rode for a hundred times uh, then we're going to Nace Punchestown and then Giltown Stud where we've got a photograph at Harzand where obviously Pat won the derby on Harzand for the two derbies uh, then we end up in the Curra Racecourse so for example if you want you don't have to do the 150 odd. If you want to do, say, 80k, you get to Fairy House at half 11. Or if you want to do 30k, you can get to Nace Race Course at two o'clock. So um, it should suit everybody. It's a pity that there's two meetings on that day, Franz. You've got a good excuse to get away from it anyway. Mm, yeah. Well, uh, Giltown stood. Giltown studs only up the backfield here, so uh, I can oh, really? reach the front gate and do the last leg to the car anyway. That's, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh... <laughs> you know, well, my my thirteen year old daughter is doing the last twelve k, so you can you can go alongside her. But uh, if somebody wants to register, Johnny, they go on. They go on to uh, Cycling Ireland's website and they can register there. And the interest has been very strong, and we've already raised a lot of money. There's some through you can go and uh, give us a few quid and go fund me, and then you can also. Um, I can send people that register, I send them out a sponsorship card and there's already good interest in that. So thanks to everybody. And I think, Johnny, you're going to come along on the day, aren't you? I am indeed. Are you going to be joining us, Will? Um, do you know what? I'm due to go down to Dingle the last week of, um, of um, September, but it's a fantastic cause. And I'd be glad. You could to cycle to Dingle and take this in on the way. <laughs> well, Johnny Max is a very keen cyclist. He's probably more your man for that, but I'd be more than happy to contribute to what is a very worthy cause. And, and just, just on that, Will, we've obviously seen with the, the Johnny Hassett's kind of GoFundMe fundraiser recently, that took place literally over the course of a weekend, um, which in, in some respects I thought was more extraordinary than the money that was raised um, by, by Pat Smullen's drive when he was alive for pancreatic cancer research. But in, in either event, um, both shone really well, I think, and the, the racing family, so to speak. Absolutely. And that's something that Pat often referenced as well, that when, when the chips are down, everybody pulls together. And it's um, something extremely good and sets apart the racing industry, I think. It's a, a very, very close community and they help each other out. So fair play. You, you knew him um, quite well, Fran. And, you know, I suppose the thing with life is life goes on and uh, we all have our day to day kind of travails or whatever. But um, for me, as much as, you know, Pat was an amazing rider, one of the best we've seen in Ireland, I think, you know, nothing, in, um, I suppose, emphasised the greatness of the man than his his battle and also what he did in terms of for other people, it didn't become about Pat Smullen, even though he was obviously dying. I know. Look, it's um, still hard to 
I believe he's gone. It's nearly a year on and uh, time, time goes by and life goes on. But uh, you'd never be far from your thoughts. It's still hard to believe. And uh, look, that's one out of too many people who die of cancer, isn't it? And uh, anything to be done. I have a good friend of mine is in hospice at the minute. And uh, look, to serve everybody as say. Uh, been touched by it and uh, you know it's just anything that can be done to try and improve it or, or negate it or get rid of it uh, the more the better and uh, you know racing game we can give out about it and we always have our difference of opinion and whatnot but uh, when as Will said when the chips are down there's always um, there's always a great revenue stream of people willing to support whether it's somebody getting paralyzed or somebody getting sick or and uh, you know that's what kind of keep, make, keeps the good in the game isn't it and it's um, it's never found wanting the, the racing community probably does need to um, rally around at the moment, obviously for a slightly less noble call, but, you know, reading in the Racing Post this week, talk of only 500 people at Le Stole. Um, I've been at, uh, been at a couple of games, in, well, I was at one game in Crow Park, been at games in the Viva Stadium. I don't know what you think about this, Gavin, but like there are, you know, they're, they're effectively at Gaelic Games, uh, people, no one is wearing a mask anymore, yet there's no idea of, you know, the, the GA being reprimanded, yet racing is doing everything right and can't get over 500 people at Le Stole at the moment. Yeah, actually, it's very, very tricky. I, you know, I'd hate to be in government because it seems no matter what you do, you, you can't do everything right. But uh, I happened to be down in Galway on the Wednesday for the press launch of the cycle. Mm. And there was all the owners were there. And then there was, I think it was a 500, as you said, from the public. And there actually was a great atmosphere in Galway that day. Mm. Um, everybody was sitting around on the, the seats out in the open air. And it was brilliantly done. Like Galway deserve huge credit for what they did. And uh, yeah, to compare with Gaelic, I don't know, Johnny, but certainly that day in Galway was perfectly done, very safe. Yeah, that, that was a thousand people in Galway, obviously, and Listol. A thousand, and, sorry. Yeah, so like, but in fairness, you're right, though, a thousand people and owners does create a bit of an atmosphere. But um, I don't know, we'll see. I think the government does need to appreciate the race and has done a great job and also helped in terms of the vaccination pro- program. Fran, Fran Berry, let's get to last week's naps. And um, we start with Juki, Go Bears Go. We'll actually have a look back at this race uh, as as we're speaking here and we go through the naps. Uh, this was a very good renewal of the Phoenix Stakes. Um, Go Bears Go was third, but what a race it was, Fran. Really interesting race. Um, I don't know if you've seen any vintage performances. I suppose if mm. the English horse Ebo River didn't come over, you'd say the railway stakes was a great race and he just reversed um, placing stand side position. Uh, it was definitely a big fa- factor in the result. Uh, the winner was really well ridden by Shane Foley. You know, he went along with a strong gallop, but he got a breeder in between the three and the two and then built it up again. And, uh, you know, it's a big success, success for Shane and Hugo Palmer. Dr. Zemf, I was a little bit disappointed that he didn't come a little bit more forward than I thought he might at, like uh, after the Curra. He did. Maybe he's a bit weak or maybe that's just as good as he is and that could be it now. He could be as good as he is at that level. Um, go Bears Go and Cass started up in the wrong part of the track. You know, I'd forgive them to a certain degree, but take nothing away for the winner. How good they all are, I don't know. We don't have... Uh, any outstanding two year that trip. Uh, that horse, uh, Eber River, ran behind Asymptomatic mm. in Goodwood. That was a messy race. Uh, a couple of horses ran in that. We'll run into Jim Crack next week at York and we might get a better reading to level that form. Do you think they're much of a muchness, um, Gavin? I do. I wouldn't I wouldn't fancy any of them, certainly with the Guineas next. I think the, the short price is 33 to 1. At the time of the race, was 1 minute 12.2, we'll say. And the last six furlong handicap was the same time. So, Mm. To me, the much for muchness and no star for me, no. Fran, your own tip. This is sort of the story of our weekend naps, really. Very frustrating. Jiu-Jitsu, again, looked like winning, ended up finishing fourth. Yeah, uh, ran a good race, actually, um, to a point. But uh, he's probably high enough handicap for what he is. He ran into a very well-handicapped horse and no more Porter, who's come up through the ranks. And uh, uh, I think Taj Shizu, there's a day in him somewhere, but he is at the limit of his handicap mark. And he probably wants a mile, mile and a quarter, at least, Johnny, looking at him the other day. Will, you're not here to apologise for Johnny Mack's uh, failure of an app, which was Ken Dancer, who uh, was fourth. I think Johnny Mack was rather frustrated at that run. But how are the betting shops going since reopening? I just I did a piece during the week, and um, it's obviously a slow process to go back to normal. It is a slow burner. Um, we're quite pleased with the way it's holding up, relatively speaking. I think probably better than some of our competitors. So, But it's a watching brief. Hopefully, as we return to normality or whatever normality is now, people will lose the fear and just get back into the swing of things. And I think, you know, what you said about getting um, people into race courses is very important in that respect. 
I can I can feel that people are becoming more relaxed with things. Um, and once that happens, I think we'll be better off. But it, it needs to improve, but it, it's not been too bad so far. Um, my nap was, again, typical. I, I couldn't believe the price went off 9-2 to two and was done for a place in more or less on the line after looking like it was going to win. That was wrong way, Harry. Just, for, um, Gavin, on that point there that, that Will is making, um, a lot of people have basically not been racing for the guts of a year and a half now. Um, during that time, a lot of people's attention span has probably arguably gotten even worse because they've been locked up in their house. A lot of them have been on the laptop or the phone a lot. So if you were to go to a race meeting for three, four hours with very little in the way of actual sport because the races themselves take place over a short space of time, you can't bank on Irish people going back to me um, racing you know, at the levels that they did. And this is one of the reasons I'm worried that I think Jessica Harrington has spoken about this. The longer this goes on, the longer people just aren't racing. Yeah, look, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be so negative on it. I think mm. that, uh, for example, you know, I think that by Christmas, Ireland will end up one of the highest rates of uh, the uptake in the vaccines. Mm. Like, there's my two daughters who are uh, 15 and 13, and they registered today. It was their own opinion they wanted to do it. So that's, you know, I think one of very, very high numbers uh, vaccinated. And I think that when we get back into the winter and we get national hunt racing, I think, I think really people will start going in their droves, to be honest. Yeah. Um, what have you made of the atmosphere, Fran, as, as you've returned? Sorry, Johnny? What have you made of the atmosphere at the meetings the last while? Uh, Galway was very enjoyable. Gorm Park was good last night. Uh, despite the numbers, everything was you know, uh, pushed pushed down towards the parade ring. And uh, you know what? You see a lot of faces that you'd see regularly on the racetrack. It's good to see them returning to re- regular uh, race scores. But uh I, I, I'd be a bit in the camp, but I do think uh, whatever happens in the winter, but like we're, we're losing time, we're losing uh, the opportunity to showcase sport. And uh, I, I think uh, looking at the Sunday game last week and the celebrations of all the winning team and fans, and then you see win- winning owners in the ring for them beside a horse and being told to keep their masks on, it just doesn't tally. And uh, look, I think the tracks do the best that they can with what they've got, but it's got to get better. Well, th- that's that's a very good point because I, I I'm not I'm not using the word race and being punished here, but if you have forty thousand people at a Gaelic games match and they're clearly not observing social distance or wearing masks in what's a vaguely enclosed area in places, how in the name of God can you impose a five hundred person restriction in the stall where you might get twenty five thousand people there? And bear in mind that Irish Champions Weekend isn't far away, so I think the government really needs to cop on here, realize the racing has done a good job. Um, on a lighter note though, let's get to the Cora itself, which is obviously Friday's. Uh, showcase meet the Coma Group uh, International Irish in Ledger Trial Six, seven o'clock. What a race this has been! Uh, if you look at the recent winners of the race from Hassan Khan 2018, leading light in 2014, Order of St. George, three years in a row when Order of St. George won the race in 2017 as the one to two favorite, rekindling was second, Twilight Payment was third, Wicklow Brave fourth, real, real high quality. And last year, it went to an odds on favorite trained by Aidan O'Brien. The Comer Group International Artists and Ledger Trial, and it's Delphi out in front, maintaining a three to four length advantage over Monument Valley. Nudged along in third is See the Line, then Micromanage. Master of Reality is improving on the outside of Broad Street, and these go on from Giuseppe Garibaldi, an aircraft carrier. Round the bend for home, less than three furlongs to go, and it's Delphi, followed by Monument Valley, Micromanaging by the rail. In the center is See the Line, Master of Reality is trying to get on terms on the outside, and then Broad Street inside the two they come and it's the battle hardened Delphi few lanes clear of micromanage master of reality on the outside of Monument Valley and then comes see the line in Broad Street inside the final furlong and the Comer Group International Irish and Trial St. Ledger Trial and it's Delphi from master of reality trying hard on the near side but going to the line Delphi Delphi from master of reality micromanage and then Monument Valley see the line and after them, broad, broad Street. This is a cracker, Fran. Um, just reading off the names here. Twilight Payment, Emperor of the Sun, Auron Naveen, Princess Zoe, the rather enigmatic words, words. What is the script for this year's renewal, Fran? <laughs> um, it, weather will have a big play with it. Won't it with Princess Zoe? That run the cup looks back by the week. Um, how strong race that was. On the day, we had a lot of rain here near the, near the car yesterday. It's yielding ground a minute, but if you get a dry day, it won't be long of it. 
being balanced to good, better side of good, if that makes sense. And uh, the drier it gets, the less it fancies. So you, if you get rain tomorrow, uh, she's she's a world fair. Uh, the wait for age, Wordsworth didn't really find his rhythm around Goodwood. Maybe maybe stepping up now to mile six would suit him better as it did in Ascot when he was second in the uh, Queen's Vaz. And I uh, would give Barring- Barrington Court a mention. Good record, Absolutely. fresh. And uh, uh, she really came good this time last year. It'd be interesting to see if she can repeat that. And Aron Levine, uh, look, he wants good ground. He'll make the pace. If he gets away in the lead, he could be there. But very, very good race. You can, you know, of them four or five, including Emperor Son and Twilight Payment, you could make a case for any of them. And, and it, if um, Prince Zoe trades at current price 11 to 8, 6 to 4, you're getting some good each way bets to Nottingham. In some respects, Aron Levine, Twilight Payment, Emperor Son, if you want to pick one of them. Yeah, and I think we'll. It's almost like we kind of uh, forget how good Irish racing is at times. When you look at this, this is a Group Three. It's um, fifty grand Group Three. It's it's just um, you know another Group Three really. But then you have so much quality in it. Oh, well, there is, yeah. Then it does revolve around Princess Zoe. What a marvelous mare she is. Um, getting back to something that Fran said there, just towards the end of the race, I went from thinking about Wordsworth at Goodwood that it's a disappointment, but then I thought he was staying on again at the end. So the step up to a mile and six and, you know, at some stage in a horse's career, he's still relatively lightly raced. The penny drops, doesn't it? So I'm, I'm looking forward to a good run from him tomorrow. But you're quite right. And getting back to what you said about crowds, there's a lot of space to fill in between the action. So it's important that the race day experience has a narrative to it, one that people can understand. I, I enjoy it when I talk to people about racing and they go, oh, right, I didn't realise that. Mm. We, we need more of that. And... Um, because it's a great sport and everything that goes with it, even the, like the colours of the jockeys and the horses. People love horses. Kids love horses. There's so much in it that is, um, is remarkable. And I think we need to stress that more. But certainly a narrative, a well-heard narrative and a well-put-together narrative on race days is important. Couldn't agree more. And Gavin, in terms of the narrative of this race, it's been Aidan O'Brien, absolute domination. He's won the last uh, seven renewals. Um, and you can imagine there's going to be a bit of pace on here. What do you think is your idea of the winner? Uh, our on the bean looks the obvious uh, pace angle. Um, good ride from Colin Keane two runs ago when mm. went ten lengths clear and they never got to him. Um, for me, it's yeah, it's Princess Zoe. The ground in, in Ascot was good to firm, but she does love a bit of give. So at the moment, it's yielding, good yielding. That'll suit her. Um, her previous couple of runs weren't so good. If I got two to one, I'd back her. I won't back her eleven days though, but I think she's the most likely winner. What would you do with her longer term? Like, would you go back to the same race as uh, the Prix de Cadre and at, uh, at, 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 at Longchamp or would you have different plans for her? Uh, I would. I'd go that race. I wouldn't go the Prix de Lark. Uh, Tony was on about that last year, but I don't, don't think she'd have the pace for that. But um, yeah, the Prix de Cadre be on soft ground, so that should suit. Let's get on to the Royal Whip. This is a Group 3 at 6 o'clock over a mile and two, and the mile and two at Curra, um, just a real fair test of uh, animal and human, I suppose, really. Start with you on this, Will. Um, Inish Free, I suppose, is the, the main talking point. <laughs> Last time we saw this horse, he was running behind Camaco uh, when he was, I think he was 11, he did an 11 to 1 shot that day. Aidan O'Brien had a short price favourite in the race, didn't he? Or Kinross was a short price favourite. Mogul was was fourth at year of the Tiger, third, and that was obviously the Bertram Fraturity Trophy six good two-year-old race at the end of the year hasn't been seen since well yeah and um you know it's a long absence to overcome but of course if anybody can overcome it Aidan O'Brien can but it does look a good race and probably going to be betting five to one the field it's that it's that open and competitive a race and you'd have to kind of shortlist Earls with Leo de Fury um and visualization because that visualization has worked out well hasn't it beaten by Fox's tails Mm. at Ascot and Fox's Tales won a group three of the weekend so that form's already been enhanced so visualisation if um, as I say five on the field it's a, a decent enough each way option I would have thought Fran I, I couldn't necessarily I couldn't go near in his free here I think he will come off throwing too many question marks what did you make of Leo de Fiori I tipped this horse up at Leopardstown the last day I thought he was a little bit disappointing he was very weak in the bet now behind Japan who got a brilliant ride I thought on that occasion um, I suppose my worry with him was that he seemed to be at his best first time out when we last saw him and if that's the case he wouldn't necessarily train on for this um, I, I, I'd be prepared to watch him again, Johnny, and see it. It was a messy race in Leopardstown, Japan. Japan obviously scrambled home and looked cinema and maker kings. It would be quite a, 
a decent race in its own right and it didn't go that quick. And look, first time back off a break, he's a five-year-old now. The Harrington team, when racing started back, when he won last June, were in full flow. And uh, they're, they're only starting to really come to form now at the minute. So I, I'd be... I wouldn't back him, but it'd be, I'd have a bit more respect for him. I think he could be better for the run. Uh, the fact Shane Foley rides him over O'Reilly, which who's been out of form O'Reilly, and uh, he does have an agreement to ride for Mr. Zang. The, the green cutter is probably reading yeah. too much into that. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Lafayette. I, I, I like that horse. I think he's really unexposed. Um, you no know, need his time with the idea of going to. Uh, the Eber Saturday week, uh, but he'd actually need a penalty off 100 to get into, believe it or not. He need to be rated 104 to get into the Eber at present. And uh, uh, I think if he, can, if he can win or run well at a mile and a quarter, he could be very good at a mile and a half too. And uh, I'd fancy him at the price. As would um, classic form, uh, Irish Derby form, the softer ground, the better he will be. He did run well in the Irish Derby, but I do think he excels with a cut in the ground. And if ground dries out, I'd be against him to some some respects for all that he is a nice horse. You'd wonder, Gavin, is his uh knowing me toying with the idea of just concentrating on the flat. He's had such a good year. It's all trainers say it's an easier game, the national hunt. Obviously, Jiggenstown is eggs in the picture, but he's had some year with his flat horses. He did, and he won his first group one this year, didn't he? Mm. Um the other thing you'll say about uh, flat compared to National Hunt is that you'd imagine that you get way less injuries on horses, so that must be, mm. must be much easier for trainers as a result. Um, Lafayette has a chance. Uh, Leo de Fury might come on for that run. It's a very, very open race. I probably won't have a bet, but if I had to pick one, maybe Earls would. Uh, as Fran said, love soft ground. They won the Gallan Newell over a mile and two. The last day in the Irish Derby, it actually stumbled a furlong and a half out up the inside. It got no run. Could have been a length or two closer. I actually didn't think it fully stayed the mile and a half. I thought it was going to stay on to be third after. But uh, for me, Earls would get them five pounds off the older horses, but it's a very open race. We'll stick with you for the rest of the card there, Gavin, if you have, Anthony. Um, obviously, we have a, a very interesting nursery with a massive, massive field. Swift one is heading the way to there, rated 83. Obviously, as I mentioned, we have the Group 2 races. Um, some difficult enough handicaps as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought maybe some of the... I was actually interested in a couple of horses towards the end of the car in the six four long a mile, ha- mile handicaps. But what uh, took your eye? Uh, in the nursery, uh, Swift one obviously was impressive the last day. I think it got twelve pound for that. Uh, Mike Sheehy rides it again. There's a horse down the bottom that might be a big price called Arch Enemy. I'd imagine that could be a ten to one shot. Um, hasn't shown a huge amount so far, but the other day in Sligo just was given way way too much to do. If you look at the replay of that, it came from a long long way back. The straight six should suit. Seven will probably end up being its better trip. It's off 66. Wesley Joyce claims seven. Uh, so maybe either Swift won, but definitely I'll have something each way on Arch Enemy in the nursery. Any Swift ones for you this weekend, Fran? Going to be very quiet. Um, I'm going to be quiet until York. I'm going there for a few days next week. So I'm, I'm going to be good this weekend. And, York is uh, going to be quiet though. Uh, no, no, and hopefully not. I actually was in England last week. I went over to Haydock and I was rained off and uh, spent a day in the airport. So hopefully that won't happen in New York. <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> on, on, the, on the rest of the card, it's it's a hard card. I would give Love Day a mention that uh, in that uh, first race, list race, her phone got thanked by Money who runs against her. Um, and Love Day very... She was a tear away in her first couple of runs. She wasn't getting home, but she was a lot controlled in Cork all by friends on the last occasion. They left the visor off her. And I think they've got to knack her. And uh, Love Day could be the one to first. And uh, headmistress for Jar Lines was a good winner in Down Ryland debut. But Love Day could be the could be a bit of value in that first race tomorrow. Any good old airport stories in your time as a jockey? Anyone you bumped into in uh, unexpected circumstances? Uh, Ian Wright met us up beside Ian Wright going, going back to ride one day and uh, very 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 nice man and um, we got talking about my shoes so it always pays to wear good shoes anyway and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and he ended up sending me a few texts on Instagram and whatnot uh, if he was going racing so a uh, very nice man but uh, uh, look this game you, you, you bump into all, all sorts of characters that all have bad points don't they 
Absolutely. I, I went to my, my new local there, the Harold House in, in, in Harold's Cross. This place has been completely closed during lockdown. And for some reason, I've never been in it anyway because of kind of been in a different part of Dublin. But uh, So I went in on my own. I was going to meet a friend last Sunday and straight away, two lads came over and just whisked me into a round that ended up being about seven or eight points later. There are two lads that are heavily involved with Aido McGuinness of horses, the Shamrock Thoroughbreds and all so on and so forth. And it was literally like I knew them all my life, which is, um, I suppose, the beauty of uh, the beauty of the Irish pub. Isn't that right, Will Riley? Absolutely, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, looking forward to get back back into the pub more regularly and just relaxing and having a good few pints of um, Guinness. It's been a while. I'm just I'm sure. just going to say about uh, Jerry Lyons. Um, Fran mentioned they're always looking at Jerry Lyons horses. My laureate in first time headgear might go well at four fifty five. Um, I mentioned visualization and only second run at the trip tomorrow, so looking forward to um, seeing him run and, and Teddy Boy in the last in a very competitive race. Looks reasonably handicapped, could go well. Yeah, and in, in that race, um, she's in the game. I think I, the only time I tipped this horse up the season was when it was the only time it, it actually disappointed, which was at Navin. And even that wasn't a bad run. Neve Bennett, I think she's chasing her first winner. She gets on really, really well with this horse. Now, she's creeping up the weights a little bit, but uh, that horse, and uh, I, I save my nap in the 7.30. It's going to be a price. I think this horse that they've kind of wasted time with um, hurling and it's going back on the flat. We also race at Tremor. Anything take your eye, Gavin, on the Friday card at Tremor? We start with... Um, <laughs> <laughs> decent chase there's actually some good horses running over the two days at Tremor including on the flat there is uh, can I just finish with one more on the half seven in, in the Cora Johnny you can indeed it's uh, shown to me it won very easy yesterday it's obviously going to be favourite uh, Alan Glynn hasn't had a winner in a couple of years but he's only had five rides in that time mm. so uh, shown to me deserves to be favourite and take a bit of beating I'd imagine uh, Tremor Johnny I thought the, there's a maiden hurdle there with two very interesting horses in it um, full o raw trained by Emmett Mullins and also uh, Corner Cove, who's rated 97. It's a decent, it's an okay handicapper. But Fuller Ra uh, was a night catch and goal. He was very, very keen, jumped quite well, stayed on to be fourth. If that settles, I think that'll win. Interesting, yeah, because that was uh, that, that it was a pretty big price uh, in Galway as well. Just just on that, how has your punt been in 2021? How have you found it? I've been closed for much of it. Um, I suppose, you know, if you look at the show prices, maybe punters are getting actually better price, particularly on long shots. But how have you found it compared to other years? Uh, it's It's been tricky, um, you know, uh, trying to get bets on and go to shops and shops being closed, etc. as you say, has been tricky. Mm. Um, there's been some wild results. Uh, Punchdown was very, very kind and Galway was the opposite. So there you go. Fran, do you like Anna Tremor? Um. <clears throat> Got to remember in this card last year, lads, that a, a certain Barnes made he got beaten off 65 in this race in one mm. race down in Tremor this meeting last year. So it just shows you what uh, what can go wrong for even all the best laid plans. He's rated 112, I think, now. But uh, actually, uh, Tremor on Saturday. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for your loss. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's uh, good but, to see you got over it. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, that shows you how difficult some of the tracks are in, Ar in Ireland and no more so in Tremor it's a unique test uh, Shinna Will in the 520 Emma Munzes I think that's or not Emma Munzes in the colours of Sandra McCarthy I think that's very interesting Dharma Well does have one Bora Bora in it but Shinna Will was a good bumper winner and uh, I think that one could take beating in the second race yeah, that's obviously the, the Saturday card is a really, really interesting card at Tremor. Um, you know, some high class runners running in it and some competitive handicaps as well. I suppose zero ten 10 running off 94. Um, good stuff there actually on, on Saturday, Will. Oh, it is, yeah. A flat card at Tremor on Saturday. As you say, from zero ten 10 Emmett Mullins, whenever he has a runner, you have to pay it respect. And um, one that caught my eye, actually I have I haven't checked to see if it's actually the final cup for the race, the two mile handicap, April's joy of Gavin Cromwell's. I thought she was back on a decent enough market. Well, it doesn't look a strong race, so I could see her going well. I think but actually April's joy, if I, yeah, April's joy has been declared again over a mile and a half. I tipped this horse up last time when it was just done out of the place and when it just didn't really look quite quick enough for the mile and a half. But um, interesting you say that, Will, because it has been, um, put back to the mile and a half. Maybe Gavin is confident there'll be a lot of pace in that race, and it, it is very, it's a very competitive race as well. Has to be said for the grades. Um, before we wrap up with and get into the naps, uh, start with you, uh, Fran. Anything else the rest of the weekend? Yeah, uh, Dundalk on Sunday. Um, just them two 
but handicaps obviously at 350 to bar one uh, more than the six four. Long. Keep an eye on Johnny Murtis, uh, Irish debutant, Riot. I uh, was trained by uh, John and Teddy Osden, UK. I uh, ran good in Ascot the last time when last seen. Interesting that uh, Qatar Racing have switched him over to Johnny as a sprinter. You know, it's an interesting mm. move. And I always like an English handicap for coming into our little bubble of sprinters. So uh, he's definitely one I'd be looking at. And in the 425, a uh, Tartlet that a uh, uh, EBF Red God handicap, very, very deep race, but Tartlet uh, could be a bit of value in the back of some only okay runs on the grass. But where she was, to be fair, fourth in a group three, back on her favorite all weather surface, she could be some bit of value in a tough race. Absolutely loves it around on dock, as do you, Will. What do you like on Sunday card? I, I do love it there, as you as you know. Um, the opening race, the two-year-old race, could be very interesting indeed. Some strong representatives potentially from big stables. Um, Butterfly Island in the Phillies Maiden, I thought, stood out. And in the Red God, and kind of stolen my thunder there. Although this race has been a very good race for three-year-olds. Seven of the last ten runnings have gone to three-year-olds. Drew Lyons has won it twice in the last seven years. He could run Halibop and Ides of August. Halibop having a first run since a gelding operation. And Jessica Harrington runs Hell Bent, who looks to be on a decent enough mark. He went up three pounds for a narrow Curra win. He's never run on the all-weather, but he's by master craftsman, so should be okay with it. But um, Tartlett, over this trip at Dundalk, four wins from five runs and a second placing. On a rating of 96, I, I agree with Fran. I'd, I'd be prepared to take a chance with her, certainly each way. How about you, Gavin? Anything else for the weekend? Uh, just to mention, in Tremor, Saturday, uh, Abbott Mullins has four runners. They're all interesting. Uh, little Bubbles in the Maiden. We mentioned 010. Savannah Starr, uh, back on the flat, and been uh, running a Maiden hurdles. Shinna Will. And the last race is interesting. Uh, Mr. Moon Dance. has not the nothing. Yeah, running off. It's uh, official rating is thirty nine, but it has to run off forty five, which is the minimum, as we know. Uh, Sean, I think there's a chance, but I thought uh, Mr. Moon Dance might make all. And one other one to mention is right turn belonged to Gerald's handicap. And on Sunday, it, yeah, keep going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sunday, that uh, ten furlong handicap, a horse called Dance Emperor, big eye catcher over the wrong trip in Galway, but there's no ten furlong race in Galway, so it had to run over a mile. It steps back up to a mile and two in the good race. It's off seventy three. Now, it's not easy for horses rate in the 70s to run against, you know, top notchers, but I think that might have been each way chance. Perfect. And let's get to the nap starting with you, Fran. Um, I'm going to go with tomorrow's, fe- well, one of the features to ride whip stakes. And given it's a deep race, you're going to give me each way on Lafayette. Um, at uh, he's 15 to 2 at the minute and uh, I'm sure some firms will be going three, four places rather than three so I think he's a bet to nothing he's a horse I like a lot and I do think he's relatively relatively unexposed beyond a mile and 10 furlongs tomorrow in a race where visualisation could go along at a good gallop should suit him very well uh, over to you Gavin I'll go with the little bubbles in the first race on Saturday and tomorrow uh, had a run in Galway, first run. It was finished beside Ross Carberg, but you'd imagine it should improve more uh, because it was his first ever run. So, uh, little bubbles in the 4.45 on Saturday. I'm going to give Hammersmith to Curra, um, which is in the mile handicap. I think this horse is effective. It's better on the flat. He's been very frustrating over hurls, but he actually likes the Curra. Uh, and if you look at his performances um, at, at uh, on the flat in general, he's actually very consistent. I have the time for that race. It is... Here somewhere. Um, while I'm looking for the time, over to you, Will Riley, for your nap. It's well, you know, I love Dundalk, and the big race at Dundalk is the Red God Handicap on Sunday. So I'm going to go in the in the um, big race itself and go with Tartlett each way. She's got such a good record over this trip at Dundalk. Four wins in a second from five runs. So I'm very hopeful, despite the fact that the race is a, is, is a good race for three-year-olds, I'm hopeful that she can buck that trend. Barwon Racing are sponsoring three races on the card at Dundalk on Sunday and we'll be boosting the price of the favourite on the live shows in every race as well. And they'll be doing that at Newmarket on Friday and Saturday. The good cards to look forward to at Dundalk on Sunday. The feature race being the €45,000 Red God Handicap. And that was On The Wire. Thanks a million to Gavin Lynch uh, for coming in. Do remember to check out the Coles, or, uh, the very, very laudable fundraiser for pancreatic cancer research and the GoFundMe page on which you can donate. Thanks also to Fran Berry as ever. Uh, Fran may enjoy his weekend of racing. And thanks to Will Riley of our sponsors, Bar One. We'll be back next week.